Today we are talking about the types of people that play Rec Room. From those frozen mirror couples in the Rec Center, to those people that think it's cute to mic spam loud and tinny music. Here are 17 of the worst offenders and general stereotypes in the game. Let's jump right in. Number one, baggers. For some reason, the baggers are shameless. Can you give me some? Can you give me lattes? The thing that confuses me about the baggers is that they don't aim higher. I mean, if I had the lack of common sense to go up to complete stranger and start begging for their hard-earned tokens, I'd at least ask for a royal crown or one of those disco ball hats. I would plead my case earnestly, explaining how I've always wanted to feel like royalty, but I grew up poor, wearing rags from the Rec Room Free Clothes program. I'd tell them, I've been grinding at dodgeball for months, but I only have 23 tokens. I need this crown. At least if you're going to beg, really plead your case. Put your all into convincing the stranger why you deserve the gift. The baggers are lazy, and I think that's what bothers me more than the actual bagging itself. Number two. People who forget to mute their mics while talking to people in real life. Now we all know that your mom is heading to Taco Bell to pick up your favorite meal of three crunchy tacos supreme and a Baja Blast while we stand there tapping our feet during Golden Trophy. It literally just takes a second to mute your mic so we don't hear Tell them no cheese, mom. I'm lactose intolerant, remember? And all sorts of other facts we're probably better off not knowing about you. Just mute your mic. Number three. The four-year-olds. Nobody knows how they got their hands on a VR headset when they should be in a crib somewhere napping. They scream so loud and have so much energy that it quickly becomes obvious. Their parents are off gambling in a casino somewhere. They left them at home with a bucket of potato chips, a two liter of soda, an absent babysitter, and yes, an Oculus Quest 2. I shake my head at the lack of parenting in this world. I truly do. Number four, water boys. For some reason in Rec Room, there's a strange phenomenon where certain individuals feel the need to hydrate those around them. You can be engrossed in a conversation or minding your own business when suddenly a water boy comes up to you and furiously demands that you start drinking water immediately. Since people often need to be reminded to drink water, you take the water bottle and say, yep, stay hydrated, which only serves to reinforce this bizarre behavior. Number five, the adults. Oh no, I'm one of them. We stand in the corner of the room, speaking in hushed whispers to each other, judging the level fours, pretending to be too good for rec room. We hold serious discussions about whether it's still cool to say pog, what the meaning of sheesh is, and why memes don't make sense to us anymore. I like my 2008 memes, thank you very much. Number six, the people who come from money. We've all heard the tales from friends. I was in the rec center and this guy just showed up and gifted me this. They say as they wear their new unicorn horn with pride, your jaw drops, but that's one of the most expensive items in rec room. Your jealousy sets in immediately. Why do they always get so lucky? Your friend sticks to their story. There was an elusive rich stranger who came in, gifted, and was gone, never to be seen or heard from again. The people in rec room who come from money. I salute your efforts to make this world a better place. Number seven, the constant inviters. That's so amazing that you're having your 35th event in Rec Room this month. Thanks for inviting me, yet again. I've declined 67 of them already, but don't worry, I have the energy to decline hundreds more. Number eight, toxic people. I'm not sure of the motivation behind toxic people, but they're a stereotype that affects us all. If you haven't lost 4 to 30% of your self-confidence because a seven-year-old yells at you that you're garbage during a PvP, then have you really played Rec Room for more than five seconds? I didn't think so. Whether you block them, mute them, report them, tolerate them, or let them destroy your self-worth, I think we can all agree on one thing. Toxic children who say horrible things to everyone deserve to have their headsets ripped off their faces and smashed on the ground in front of them and then be made to take those little tiny pieces and turn them into an art mosaic while not having any access to social media for the next five to 10 years. Number nine, the mirror couples. I'm not sure if these people are real or a figment of my imagination. The reason is that they don't seem to move. Real people in Rec Room move around a little, blink, talk. The mirror couples seem to be frozen in time, so engrossed in their romances that they have forbidden each other to breathe, blink, or acknowledge the rest of the planet. They merely sit there absorbing every silent movement of each other's presence. It's very strange. Number 10, the strangers who want to be your friend. I don't know these people. They're usually under level 10, and maybe it's their strange way of trying to network. Maybe they've figured out some mad strat for becoming popular that I have yet to realize. But you will be minding your own business and they will come up to you and force their hand out. If you're like me, you simply don't have the mental fortitude to argue. Now you're friends with some mute level 8 that you will never see or hear from again. Classic Rec Room. Number 11. The players who are mute. The people with no mic have always unnerved me a little bit. I don't care if you judge me for that. This is a social game. So when you see people lurking and not talking, but then you accidentally inadvertently ask them a question and they nod, proving that they can hear you, 
It's kind of creepy. Now, I know there's many reasons for people to not talk in the game. Broken mic, broken confidence, not wanting to be outed because they're really a 10 year old that should be on a junior account. However, I personally will never entirely feel comfortable in a room with someone who's mute and just stares at me. I won't. Number 12, the mic spammers. Your music is tinny. You are not cool. It does not sound good. And when you run around in erratic loops in the rec center so fast that someone can't even get a finger on you long enough to report and mute you, it only adds to the frustration. Do us all a favor and please stop with the mic spam because no, it is not cute. Number 13, the level 50 league players. You guys know who I'm talking about. You go to a game of Rec Royale and there they are huddled in a corner simultaneously judging the whole room and ignoring everybody at the same time. Once they kill you and you end up back in the loser lobby, you go up to them and ask them a simple question such as, how can I hit you when you're teleporting? And you're met with a brisk, cold response as they immediately spawn out of the room, heading to the next lobby full of people that they're about to slaughter. Number 14, the quest trolls. Surely they take a class when they start Rec Room. This is a conspiracy theory that I really believe in. Somehow, somewhere, they are taught this kind of behavior. I just know it. They're sat down in a classroom and taught the following four behaviors. One, when you arrive at a quest, sink as many arrows into the face of a stranger as you can. Number two, don't stand on the mat. Suddenly pretend to become engrossed with your watch instead. Number three, when you do make it into the quest, friendly fire your teammates as much as possible. Number four, don't speak, ever. Number 15, the maker pen experts. As you're standing in your dorm, trying to resize a photo with the maker pen, but it keeps getting stuck to your hand, your friend shows up. You know the one. They're cracked at Maker Pen, and just being in their presence makes you feel like a bit of an idiot. They look at you and sigh, probably because you have a photo stuck to your hand, and tell you to just move aside. In two seconds flat, your photo is resized, it's in a cute little frame, and it's frozen in place on your bookshelf. It feels like a one-sided friendship. You and the Maker Pen expert, you always need help with something, and they pity you enough to keep helping. I'm sorry to report that I am the friend with the photo stuck to her hand, and 90% of my friends are the ones who show up and roll their eyes at me. Number 16, the glitchers. You know, there are certain people who are perfectly content just to play a game and enjoy themselves. Then there are those who cannot rest until they break the game, exploit all the bugs, and make the game developers look like a group of untrained monkeys. From escaping into hidden walls and golden trophy to playing God in the rec center, the glitch hunters always find a way to make the impossible possible. Number 17, the PVP expert. I have a couple friends like this, and unfortunately, they've lost the ability to play laser tag or paintball with me unless they agree to be on the same team. You've got two kills on the board? Well, they've got 22. After you've been taken down and you respawn and emerge from your shipping container cocoon and paintball, they hit you smack in the face yet again. Rage quitting seems like the only reasonable route to take after playing with a PVP expert for five minutes. You exclaim things like, how when they hit you from halfway across the map? Again, when you've been spawn killed for the fourth time in a row? And ridiculous, when a grenade comes up behind you, explodes, and kills you on impact. Oh, those PvP experts. Did I miss a stereotype of a rec room player? Let me know in the comments. Don't be sad because this video is over. I put more videos up on the screen that you can watch now. Yay! You can also choose to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. That way YouTube will tell you the moment that I put out videos or start a live stream. I always release videos on Wednesdays and Fridays, and I live stream Mondays at 4pm Pacific time. So we will see you guys in the next video.